guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I'm here with a video I didn't originally plan on making, uh, but I saw some stuff online, some people talking, and I wanted to point out the differences between these two games, all right? So this one on the right is the one that I had previously covered very recently, SAS Rogue Regiment, all right? This one on the left, this is V Commandos. Got both games. I've had this one for a little while. Now, this isn't their most recent Kickstarter version. The most recent Kickstarter version they had had miniatures and all the other good stuff in it. I didn't back it since, obviously, I already had the, the game itself. And uh, I think the tokens work perfectly fine for this game. Although, this version, I think, is a little more conducive to minis than this one. Although, realistically, you could use minis in both if you really wanted to. Now, the reason I am doing this is because I've seen some people talking about these games and basically saying this is the same thing as this. And I disagree on that. There are so many different types of games out there that are they're similar. That's why we have genres, right? Think about the worker placement games. There's upteen worker placement games out there, but they're different. They have different themes. They have different mechanics. They operate differently from each other. These are two stealth commando games, right? But they're not the same. They each have their own components, they each have their own mechanics, and they're handled in different ways. Just because they have the same basic premise, you're operating commandos trying to accomplish a mission, doesn't mean they're the exact same game. They're just similar. Now, when it comes to the components themselves, I'm not going to do a straight off comparison because this is a prototype copy. I can't uh, give a flat out comparison for SAS because these aren't finalized. They're, they're close. This is a very nice production version. I'm very happy with this production version, but I can't rate them on it, on what this is going to be. I will say that if the final version of the game is at least this quality, if not better, which I assume it's going to be better because it's never worse than the prototype copy, I would be happy. They're, they're equally on par. All right, so quick overview here. Looking at these, we have our commando board slash cards. For V commandos, you have cards. It's going to have their health slash action points on the left, and their equipment on the right, picture in the center, and then any special abilities they have down here at the bottom center. If they have built-in equipment, like our scalp hill here has a built-in cult pistol, then that is printed onto the card. Others will be tokens, like this crowbar is a usable token. So it's on the card, but it's not fully printed on the card because that can be used. And he's got a couple extra slots that can be filled with extra tokens. And the game itself comes with a whole handful of different tokens you can get from assorted different weapons, uh, medical kits, explosives, or even uh, German uniforms, which I actually think is really cool and a neat aspect that is in V Commandos that I haven't seen in SAS, but again, I will say again, I haven't seen the full version of this game. I've only played a piece of it, so I can't say for certain it doesn't have certain things because I don't know what all the commandos are going to have. Now, these commandos and V commandos, their health being here on the left, as they take damage, you see that there are these minus one icons. And that is because when you take injuries, you're going to have these tokens, if I can get them to focus, uh, applied there. They will reduce the amount of action points that a commando has for their turn. Our SAS boards are different in the fact that they are boards, not cards. They have a single spot for stuff that they can carry because they're not gaining a whole bunch of equipment. Basically, they can pick up things like pick up an enemy body or a fuel can to drop it off somewhere to create an explosion. They're not going to be changing equipment throughout the game. They pretty much start with what they're going to have, whether it be whatever weapons, explosives, special equipment, or knives, things like that. And then their health bar is represented by token over here that's kept track of. They do have more health and they have the ability to regain health by using some of their action points. Now, when it comes to our player board here, for SAS, our key aspect that I really like is the mark ability. And most of the operators I assume are gonna have this, the two that were in my kit do, 
and that is basically a ability where you get to mark an enemy and kill them on the enemy turn. You can basically plot out, set up an attack, right? That is not able to be done in uh, V Commandos. I really like this ability. It's more of that planning out thoughtfulness of what you're going to do. But I will say, looking at the two, I mean, come on, even look at these two guys. They're, they're very similar, right? They, the stuff there is, is, is pretty well on par. The number of dice you're rolling, what you need to hit, stuff like that. So no real big swing in either direction for either game. You got a few less action points in V Commandos, but that's, that's game mechanics. It's not that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to it, though, just again, as an FYI, the SAS commandos are more differentiated by the equipment that they're going to carry, whereas the V commandos are more differentiated by the special abilities they have. They can all pretty much have weapons and pick up different items, but the scout will have different abilities than the officer, than the medic, and, and so on. So different equipment here versus different abilities here. So that's it when it comes to our operators, but what about when it comes to our missions? The missions, what I have here for SAS is a preview mission. They have it set out as a player aid. It's a map marked out how it's going to be laid out and it has to be laid out in this specific formation. The icons here listing down what everything is and where it's going to go. And then the spots for enemy reinforcements in your own spawn location here with the specifics of your mission or any special rules here at the bottom, and then our alert level here at the bottom track. So if this number reaches the, the bell icon down here, that's gonna set off the alarm and kick off the battle phase of this game. When it comes to V commandos, theirs are handled by cards. We see here an example of the bridge mission, and it shows you all the different sizes Stay focused for me. Any special uh, rules for the mission, icons of where different things are going to go, and then the size of the tiles that are going to be there. Now these tiles are going to be three different sizes, small, medium, and large, which I have an example set out here. We're gonna touch on these more here in just a second. While we're talking about missions though, something I do like about V Commandos, and I can't say one way or the other about SAS because I don't know enough yet, is the way that they can have branching missions. So they can have a list of missions. We have both church and bridge here, and you see we've got bridges and then church. So in this setup here, you would start in city, and then depending, you would go to one of these two missions, and then you would carry on to church, and you can have a campaign that rolls out that way. So you have multiple of these cards, and you have to accomplish these different missions to have a, a set of scenarios or a campaign. I really like how that plays out. It kind of gives you some choice in how things are going to be done. I don't know exactly how it's going to be handled in SAS, if it's just going to be a bunch of the player aid type scenarios that I've shown you, or different ones that can be strung together into a campaign. I would like to see them do something like this, because this is neat. I like this aspect. Now that would bring us back down to the tiles, but I don't want to touch on them just yet because that comes into the core aspect of the difference between these two games. So continuing on with the rest of the components, we're, we're still pretty well on par. Both have tokens to represent the commandos, right? So we have a couple of commandos here, and this is for V commandos, this is for SAS. And again, like I said, keep in mind, I don't know what the final components are gonna be here, so take it with a little bit of grain of salt. For the V Commandos, one side's going to be normal, the other side's going to be alert. And then for SAS, one side is going to be normal, while the other side is going to be crouched. For this game, there is two different Commando tokens. One that is alerted, one that's been spotted, and then it's going to have its crouch side on the other side of that. So you have two to uh, tokens for the same operator. In the commandos, some of these also have double tokens as well because they can be dressed up as German soldiers. So there is a little comparison there. 
When it comes to the tokens though, I'm gonna lean towards SAS because I like the ability to crouch, tuck in behind walls, you know, hide from the enemy. I like that aspect. Continuing on with our components, we can look at our event cards. Both games have event cards. They're each gonna be played each round. They're gonna be different though. In V Commandos, you're going to have random events, just whatever things are happening through the course of the game, white flags or alerts happening or reinforcements, stuff like that. But also make sure you pay attention to this symbol on the bottom. It's gonna be north, south, east, or west, which is going to correlate to this token, which is going to be moving the enemy troops. We'll touch on that when we talk about our tiles here. So these event cards in short bring randomness and chaos to V Commandos. It's different when we talk about SAS though. It doesn't bring necessarily randomness and chaos. It brings in a way order and structure. And the fact that these cards are going to control the flow of reinforcements when the battle phase starts and the flow of the patrol of enemy troops during the stealth phase. So in this game, the SAS one, you're going to look on the left side when you're in your stealth phase and that's going to determine what direction and how far sentries are going to turn as they're basically standing guard and they're going to rotate in their square looking around in different directions depending on what the card tells them to do. Also, this will rotate from turn to turn, black to white, and that will cause different enemy units to patrol around the board on these marked out lines. So you'll have some that are moving one turn and then others that are moving on the following turn, depending if they are the black soldiers or the white soldiers and the black sentries and the white sentries. In a way, you have some information about who's patrolling and, and kind of what they're doing. You know who's going to be doing something, but you don't know necessarily what they're going to be doing. Kind of like the Commandos video game, when you would see enemy units patrolling along, you will know what their patrol path is, but not necessarily how long they're going to stay there, if they're going to turn around and look at you. So you had to kind of plan out your actions. So both games, event cards, but the event cards do drastically different things. This one just has random things happening. This one controls the stealth and whether or not uh, reinforcements are going to pop in. So reinforcements here, no reinforcements here, and then possibility of raising your alert level, which can potentially cause the alarm to sound and send you into the battle phase. Now, when it comes to battling itself, the, the gunning and the knifing and the shooting, I'm really not going to touch on it all that much because for both games, they're actually relatively similar. Uh, the symbols on the cards or tokens for each game are going to tell you how many D6 you're rolling, what number you have to roll to cause hits to the enemy and your own troops. Both games uh, handle combat relatively similar. If you know one, you're going to have a, a decent time understanding the other. Now, personally, after playing both, when it comes to combat, I like the combat here in SAS more than I like the combat here. And that's partly due to what we're going to touch on last, which is these tiles and the, the stealth elements. But I think it's a little more thematic here, a little more hex encounter type war game in the way it's handled and the fact that you'll duck behind shrubs or walls or duck into buildings, whatever the case, you're trying to get cover, line of sight uh, and modifiers in that direction. And here it's based simply on the tiles when it comes to combat. And that is the numbers that you see here in the bottom right corner of each tile, four plus, three plus and two plus depending on their size to determine whether or not you're going to hit. Here, the tiles are all the same size. It's what's on them, where you're located. Are you in cover? Are you in the open? That's gonna determine your modifiers. So again, I think it's more thematic here than it is here. This has more of an arcadey feel. All right, so all of that to say, the key point of it, which is the stealth element of the game. These are commandos games. 
Your goal is to be stealthy. Your goal is to be the, the super ninja guy that comes in with your super awesome equipment and you sneak in past all these German guards and you take out the objective, rescue the hostage, blow the bridge, whatever your goal is. It's how these two games handle that aspect. That's the key thing that's going to make the difference on these two games. The rest of it is, is relatively similar, I will give it. The stealth element is not. It's completely different on these two games. SAS First. This one handles like a tactical skirmish game. Your counters will move around. You'll duck behind walls. You're going to try to avoid line of sight. The enemy soldiers, right? They have a direction printed on their counter, and that's the direction they're looking. So when they're rotating as a sentry or moving along their patrol lines, when they're patrolling, that matters. You need to try to time your movements so you don't get caught. But not only that, if you kill an enemy in an area where the corpse counter is not going to disappear, that corpse is going to stay there and can cause the enemy to alert depending on if they see it or not. So out here in the open on a road or open field, if there's a corpse, it stays there. You have to pick this corpse up and take it into the woods or take it into an empty building and leave it. And then it disappears at the end of the round. It's basically you've hid the, uh, the dead enemy soldier to keep from alerting the enemy. Think of how many other games have that uh, type of effect. Uh, plenty of those covert stealth games, you're taking out or knocking out an enemy soldier. Think, you know, Metal Gear Solid and you tuck him into a, a, a trash can or something like that. That way the other friendly troops or enemy troops rather, aren't going to catch on to the fact that there's a special operator there. That's how this game is handled. It's all about using the equipment that you have and timing yourself into the patrols, trying to avoid line of sight, but you can do stuff, right? You can pop off a shot, you can knife a guy. There are certain things that will cause your alert level to go up, but it's not gonna kick you over into the battle phase of the game automatically. You still have chances to remain stealthy or go back into stealth potentially up until the battle phase starts, as long as you're making smart decisions. You don't want to shoot at a guy that's going to alert everyone in the area because naturally the enemy's going to come pouring in on you. There's a lot of nuance to it, but this plays much more like the adaptation that I would expect of a operator, special operator game down to a tabletop experience. The experience here in V Commandos is much more abstracted and it comes completely down to the size of the tiles. And one of the key things here is the tiles themselves don't matter. I have a buttload of these tiles, right? One side is going to show the inside of a building and the other side is going to show the outside. But the thing is, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what tile is in what place, the only thing that matters is what size they are. Now, personally, that is something I dislike in a game. As an example, the Resident Evil games have done that. Resident Evil 3 and 2, I don't think I played the first board game, uh, the Kickstarters for those, had tiles that it didn't matter what tile you used as long as it was the right size tile. I don't like that. I like my tiles to be specific to the order in which they go on the, the board to create a very specific layout, a map that you're going to play on. So when it comes to the stealth element here, then when we're looking at whether or not you're going to get spotted, it's very easy to understand if you're gonna get spotted here. If an enemy sees you, you're spotted. Or if you shoot within a certain range or do something noisy within a certain range, or if you set off an explosive, that's going to alert everyone. That's what I did in my game. I had a lot of fun with it. Makes sense over here. Here, it comes down to a dice roll, and they have special dice for it. Right? Like it's zoomed in there. Ones and twos have that I symbol. So that's what they call a stealth check in this game. So what you're going to do is if you move into a tile that has an enemy like this one has an enemy, you have to perform a stealth check and you're looking to see if that die shows that one or two with that spotted symbol. And if it does, then your operator is going to become spotted. 
but that only counts for small and medium tiles. It doesn't count for large tiles. If you move on to a large tile, you're automatically spotted. There's no hiding behind a table, tucking behind a tree, tucking in behind a, a truck, whatever the case may be. It's just, it's a large tile, you're spotted, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't like that. That was always my biggest gripe with the V Commandos is that the, the stealth aspect of it was so abstracted that it didn't feel accurate to me. That didn't make any sense. Like, yeah, it might be an open field, but you could still crawl across it. There still might be a, a low ditch. You're going to keep your head down. You're not going to go there. And I found in my games that I would do everything possible to avoid the big open areas, the, the large tiles. Now, yes, that does make sense that an operator wouldn't just go tramping around into a field. But in almost all the missions, the big tiles were the ones that had the, the thing that you had to go for. Whether it might be something like your escape hatch or uh, the alarm system or whatever it was that they put on that tile. So in a way, you would be forced to go there to get spotted. But also, when it comes to the movement of the enemy forces, it's handled by the event cards we showed earlier with that symbol. If your guys are not spotted, so there's no spotted operator for them to go after, there's no set pattern like there is in uh, SAS, right? Drawing the card, seeing what direction they're going to go, and then which ones of the patrols are going to be moving this turn. It's simply, okay, well, that says S, so they're going to move south. So every enemy troop is going to move in that direction, right? It, they kind of got an electric slide thing going on here, right? We're all going to step down. We're all going to take two steps to the left and then two steps to the right. And, and that's how the movement's going to work. Now, I know it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm dinging hard on V Commandos, and I don't mean to be really, because V Commandos is a good game. I've enjoyed V Commandos. It's It's been on my shelf for a long time. I had it back before uh, people knew V Commandos was even a game, right? Back when they first released it. And I always enjoyed it. And I wanted more games of its ilk, games that had been proved, games that really enhanced that stealth mechanic that I wanted, right? That Commandos video game feel down into a board game, which I think SAS did, right? They saw what V Commandos did, and they enhanced it. And personally speaking, I think this one is, how, how do I say this? It's abstracted to the point that it's a little easier to play. And I think I could get my kids to play this one and understand the rules because it's not that hard. Uh, it's easy to understand what the, the tokens and the icons and everything mean. The enemies just move this direction. Uh, what size is the tile? Okay, you're spotted, right? The, a lot easier to get into. So if this was a complexity of like a four, this is more of a complexity of like a six because it takes that puzzle element, the, the key element that you're going to get a game like this for, that stealth mission, and it ramps it up. There's a lot more moving parts that you're keeping track of over here and a lot deeper ways that you can accomplish your mission versus over here. I really loved the idea of setting down a bear trap here in the patrol path line, getting an enemy taken out, the corpse is left there, and then I would have my operator grab that corpse, shove it into the tree line so the enemy is hidden, and I've, I've basically maintained my stealth level. But I had to do it before the other enemy patrol came around and spotted the guy that I had just wiped out. So I had one turn to get it done, and maybe I had another operator tucked over the side, and he had this one marked so he could knife him as he came around so he didn't see what was going on over here. There's, there's such a deep planning to go on over here. Now, I'm not saying that V Commando doesn't have that. Of course it does. That's the, the point of it. You have to accomplish your mission. This is much more luck based though. Like, am, am I gonna get lucky? Did I get spotted? Are my dice rolls gonna succeed? Oh no, I, I rolled a one, I rolled a two, I got spotted. Now all the enemies are gonna come after me. This kind of takes away that agency that you can have to make those smart decisions because you know, okay, well, I've got a few turns before that patrol is gonna be back around. 
can I figure out a way to get over here to take out this sentry before that patrol makes it back around? You can do that here. You can't have that experience here. So ultimately, both games are good. But in my opinion, just my, my, my humble opinion from years of playing war games, if you've enjoyed V Commandos and you, you like that stealth action gameplay, I think you would be doing yourself a tremendous disservice when it comes to SAS. Because I think it's V Commandos stepped up a notch into a, a higher level of gameplay, that deeper stealth experience. Because like I said, the, the combat aspect of the game isn't what you play this for. Uh, there's dungeon crawlers galore out there. If you want to roll dice to do shooting stuff, you play Core Space. You don't play one of these games. You play these games for the stealth. You play these games to figure out that puzzle of getting the mission done and extracting your guys without getting caught, without uh, alerting anyone, right? Here, you stand a chance of doing that based on your wits. Here, you stand a chance of doing that based on your dice rolls. All right, but anyway, I'll stop yapping. I, I just wanted to touch on that because, like I said, I'd seen a few people talking about it. And they were saying, you know, basically one was just as good as the other. I don't think it is, right? Now, if you ask my wife, she's probably going to say, yeah, you know, they, they look the exact same. I don't get it. Well, to me, I don't understand why she needs five pairs of black shoes or five purple purses. That doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense to her. This makes sense to me. Anyway, I hope that fleshed it out for you guys a little bit. By all means, feel free to put it down below if you got any questions or concerns. I will answer them to the uh, best of my ability. But uh, 100%, again, if you've played V Commandos, definitely worth checking out SAS if this is something you enjoyed. And if you've already backed uh, SAS and you haven't heard of V Commandos, it's another experience worth trying because I know I'm, I hammered on it, but I hammered on it to establish the differences. I still like the game. I still think it's fun. I just think this is a different version and I love the stealth mechanics of this one more. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, put your comments down below. Let me know what you think and I will catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care.